What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest of cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shan Tynes. What's up? What's up? What's going on? And welcome to Wednesday's episode. I don't know what number this is. I'm terrible at keeping count. <laughs> 300 and blah, blah, blah. Um, definitely continue to tune in to all the episodes. We appreciate you guys coming back to listen to us. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Monday and Tuesday are our topics. Wednesday's our discussion. And then Fridays, we talk about everything non-cyber related. So movies, books, games, TV shows, all that good stuff. Um, in this discussion, I wanted to go over um, an article I found on the Hackers News uh, entitled Massive HTTP DDoS Attack Hits Record High of 71 Million Requests Per Second. So we've discussed this in the past. Uh, I think the, the largest one last time we talked about was like 40 million or 50 million. Uh, which was the world record. It was, uh, Shannon reminded me during the break, it was uh, blocked by Google. Um, we talked about a, a massive one that was going to hit the Ukraine that uh, Microsoft blocked. So we're getting better. Uh, but now uh, Cloudflare uh, has thwarted the record-breaking uh, denial uh, that peaked at over 71 million requests per second. They're calling it a hyper-volumetric DDoS attack, a tsunami, if you will, um, that was um, kind of, not kind of, what was the word I'm looking for? Um, they, it's, it's been enumerated, right? They figured out that it was 30,000 IPs that belonged to numerous cloud providers um, that uh, started this attack and that they, uh, they go on to say that it was a, a, one of the longest attacks as well. So they said that, um, I want to make sure I get this right, it says um, the sophistication and frequency of DDoS attacks are on the rise with the, the company recording a 79% spike in HTTP uh, DDoS attacks year over year as of the final quarter of 2022. And then the other stat I wanted to talk about was, was more the number of volumetric attacks last more than three hours, lasting more than three hours has surged by 87%. So not only was this a huge attack, but it was also a long lasting attack. So what are, you, what are your thoughts on this, Shannon? Man, this is a disturbing trend is, is my thoughts on this. Um, like, think of, so when you think about it, so the previous one that was that was the record breaker was 46, right? Like we're, we're getting close to doubling it, making it 71, 71 million, right? Is what it was this time, 71 million yes. requests mm -hmm. per second. Like this is becoming a disturbing trend. And the thing is, this is only going to get easier, right? So like, think about how we live, right? Everything has an IP address now, right? This is why we go. This is why we're going to IPv6, right? This is why we, we're we're up one we're one out. day. We we've, we've been going to IPv6 for at least twenty years. I I, I hear you, <laughs> but, this, but this is the reason why, right? Like everything has right. has an IP on it, right? Your fridge does, your toaster does. Like everything is becoming smart now, right? To where it's assigned an IP. Um, so it's going to make things like this a lot easier because of the convenience we want to we want to get to, right? Now, eventually, I think eventually there will be a breaking point where it's going to break through for a long period of time and it's going to suck. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to be able to do some things that you want to do, like whether it be right. uh, telemedicine, you know what I mean? Somebody can't connect to their provider for an appointment they have or for some type of, now usually with emergency, you go to an emergency room, right? But as we've yeah. seen in these last, in these last two and a half years, um, those can become overcrowded, right? Really three years, actually. Now that I think about it, it's, we're pushing three years now uh, with COVID to where, you know, you'll get, emergency rooms backed up you get clinics that get backed up for people getting seen like it's only a matter of time before this has very legitimate life-threatening effects you know what i mean because of how we live life technology um i've said it before i hate to say it but technology will kill us all right like <laughs> it's just the the movies we watch are not too far off from what is going to happen you know the the three laws will do us in at one point right right, right. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's gonna it's gonna happen but um, no, this is a disturbing trend. And like the numbers you read out, right? Like the percentages, like the 79% spike, the amount lasting over three hours, like that is crazy, man. Three hours. So three hours yeah. not being able um, to, to get to what you may need that, like that could be several lives lost. You know what I mean? That could be hundreds of lives lost again, because of how we live our life, right? Everything has an IP now, the the, the internet of things, right? Like it, everything is, is assigned one to where they all help you, right? And, and it's going to get to a point, right? Like you have, it's like, 
it's like having children that don't know how to use a, a rotary phone, right? Like they don't know how to get by without the electronics that we use today, right? right? And then the ones, those of us that do, it was like, oh yeah, I remember, I remember the original computer. It was called a pencil, right? Like this was print when you wrote with it, right? Delete, you know, use the eraser, right. Right? you know what I mean? So like there, there's, there, we're getting to that inflection point to where there is a younger generation that just doesn't know anything different. You know what I mean? So if they go without it, it's going to be really hard for them to, to live without those things that they live with. And they're not going to know what to do. You know what I mean? Um, yeah kind of the point we're getting to now big ups to Cloudflare, right like they did their part they were like hey we, we, we did this we did this we stopped it kudos to you but it, it it's gonna like i said there's gonna come an inflection point where it's gonna be too much and it's gonna cost lives um and that's the sad thing about it you know what i mean but great great for them to do this and, and brag on it today but tomorrow's a different story you know what I'm saying? So, right. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I guess uh, the, the optimist in me is like, well, they uh, were able to, to, they, they say thwart. Uh, I don't use that word very frequently, but <laughs> they're able to stop this attack. Um, who's to say they don't, they, they're not built more robust where they could have taken double um, the, uh, the uh, request per, per second. Right. Um, like we don't know what their threshold is. So I, I think that if if not, like they're already working towards making that happen, right? Like uh, Google, Microsoft, Cloudflare, there's a bunch of different companies out there uh, working on solutions. Um, I think, and this is just me speculating, but I, I think um, because a lot of things are are in the cloud, it gives them a little bit more um, ro robustness, so to speak. It gives them a little bit more um, shielding in that you can just move an instance somewhere else. Like this is being attacked. Um, and we are unable to communicate with it, but we have a hot spot that is on the other side of the globe that, you know, it's going to take you a little bit longer to get there. Like, and that the, the speed of the internet nowadays, like it'll take you five more seconds, like if that to, to get there than the other. Um, so there, there's a, a lot of, uh, elasticity there. I think if you're on-prem still though, if you're purely on-prem, like, yeah, this would destroy you. It's just, there's no way of getting around it, right? Like if you, if you have a single point of failure that is uh, located in, in your data center on premises and it's being attacked, you're going to have some issues with, with elasticity in that, in that regard. Um, but I, 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 I just can't think of a, uh, well, I think you're right though. Like hospitals are just very slow to adapt to this type of stuff, right? Like, so your Xbox live service, your uh, Netflix, your, your things that, um, our, our money makers, but don't, um, necessarily have lives counting on it are very robust. They're in the cloud. They're, they're, uh, there's multiple instances of them in case something were to, to jump off financial banking, things of that nature, but some hospitals still on windows 97. So them being in the cloud and being robust and being out there, uh, uh, uh yeah, you might be right. Like this could be, uh, dangerous in the future. Don't forget about quantum computing coming faster than what we think too. That, that, that is that. Because. Yeah, that's a nightmare. Like, I, uh, but it still would be restricted by the speed of the internet, right? Like, so I, I think we're still safe in that regard. Like, it, it can think faster, but it can't travel faster. When when they get to the point where quantum computing is becoming becoming a a uh, more common in the personal yeah. household, I just think it'll be one of those things where they're like, hey, we have to we have to up, you know, this backbone. We have right, to right. We need, we need uh, terabits per second, right, in speed. Right. Like, like megs and gigs are going to be a thing of the past, right? <laughs> so right, that's right. Gonna, you know what I mean? So like, it, that's, that's what's going to end up, that's what's going to end up happening um, it, it is my fear, right? Almost going to end up happening is that it's just going to be to a point where it's like, it is happening so fast that even with these big companies, right? Because look yeah. at it, look at it now, like as much as everything is becoming automated, like they're getting rid of the people that may have, I don't know if this was caught by a person, right? I don't know if somebody was looking at a monitoring system. Oh said, yeah. I, I doubt it. I, this, this probably is AI. It's it could like, be. Hey, this, this is like, there's a person there to, uh, to wrangle it. Like to, right. to say, like, you know, to, to look at the dashboard and see like, Hey, this is happening. Mm -hmm. Um, I should go talk to my leadership about it, but I don't think human beings are, are would have been quick enough to stop this and admit it. Like maybe so. I don't know. I've never, you know, worked in cyber in that regard. So maybe there is a team of people who sit there and just wait for spikes of traffic. So, so if that's most the, likely it's automated. So if that is the case, then for those of you that have seen iRobot, right? The movie, <laughs> not read the books. Are you telling me Vicky is running this right now, right? That was the computer, right? right? From right, iRobot, right, right, yeah. Vicky caught it? Like I think it would have to be though, because to see all of the triggers, right? Like yeah. 
some some it had to be an automated process like hey wait a minute like this is because there has to be a a swell right then you see like all these addresses are hitting this single whatever whatever it was they didn't disclose who was being attacked i think they they went as to say they said it was financial video game or something else so it was probably a data center of some sort was getting hit what did it say yeah this one was just saying uh some major attack so it could be aviation education gaming hospitality the full gamut telecom like it could be anybody <laughs> it might as well not even put specific uh names there but uh maybe yeah in this regard maybe it was um uh, a larger corporation that doesn't want to be disclosed that they're being attacked it could be it could very well be but yeah like you're right the iot army uh as well as just people <clears throat> who don't patch their stuff <laughs> right so this thirty thousand ips some of these were probably like home computers right like i wonder why my internet's so slow right now well, it was because you're attacking someone and you don't even know it so uh people will always be the weakest link in this regard but i think a lot <clears throat> for it to be that many ips i think a lot of it probably was iot devices like there was a, a 10,000 thermostats out there attacking this company, <laughs> unbeknownst to the uh, the the homeowner. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, it, I mean, it, it is something to think about in the future as, as internet speeds become faster, as more devices are developed, and as um, more uh, IoT devices kind of uh, drop off into life. Like, because you're still going to have them in your house, you're just not going to be paying attention to them. And they're going to be vulnerable and they're going to be unpatched because companies don't have a vested interest to patch your, um, I don't know, your 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 nest first gen that you still got running right. in your uh, your rental home, right? Is out there attacking people. And you would you would never know. We just wonder why it's acting funny. They'll just want you to buy new. That's the thing, right? They'll be like, oh, we don't support that anymore. But our new line, you know what I mean? Right. That and the third. That's that's what they'll want, you know. Right, but we we talked about in the past how there are frameworks being put in place for IoT devices, but that would be those would be for the new devices. The ones won't be for the old ones that are currently still running out there, which will probably be running for until they they finally burn out, um, which could be a decade from now. So, uh, but yeah, it was definitely interesting to see that. So it, uh, again, record breaking, uh, seventy one plus million uh, requests per second. So that's enough to. Um, stop most companies however like you have like Cloudflare uh, AWS Google um, and uh, Microsoft out there kind of protecting us from from set attacks um, but uh, again it's 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 really going to be people dependent they just need to be better educated to know that hey I need to patch my devices to make sure they're not out there attacking people right they're not part of the botnet but that's that's a whole different um convoluted conversation yeah but definitely tend to hit us up uh definitely appreciate you guys listening to the discussion so monday and tuesday are topics wednesday's discussion and then friday which will be the next episode will be everything else so movies tv books all that good stuff so tune into that um to to you know end your week on your your uh your your commute unless you work from home then just I don't know what you would call it, <laughs> your walk <laughs> down the hallway. Um, definitely hit us up on all of our websites. You can hit me up personally. I'm at Rye Rye Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Clubhouse. Stay safe. Stay secure.